Howdy, y'all. Um, I hope you can hear me. I'm sure you should be able to. I'm only wearing uh, headphones today. And now I gotta go to the restroom, so I'm gonna pause this. And I don't know why I need to include this. <laughs> me going to the restroom, pause. Because I literally could just stop the video right here and start a new one, but I'm not gonna do that, so I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. So, it's been a minute for me, but a moment for y'all. And I don't even have these. This is all a part of my process. Getting ready. It's one of those G R W M. Right? Get ready with me. I'll just leave this down here. I don't think I'm going to end up pulling these. So I had this idea like yesterday to run two spreads simultaneously. Or like multiple, honestly. But. Excuse me. There were two that I wanted to put together. And I needed to, didn't need to, but I wanted to use decks that I was more familiar with. So I'm using the Spirit Keeper's Tarot and the Wild Unknown Tarot. And I also wanted it to be spreads that I was fairly familiar with, so I didn't have to, like, um... Look, reference back to the thing too much. Sorry, my brain just out on me. <laughs> but that isn't necessarily the case. The Hierophant is at the top of one deck. Eight of Pentacles is at the bottom of the other one. I didn't look at the top. Oh, the top is the, <laughs> the, the High Priestess and the Hierophant. Okay, all right. So I'll take that. Cut into the Six of Pentacles. The Eight of Pentacles at the bottom. Alright. Hangman and the Eight of Pentacles. And then the Daughter of Arms with the Eight of Pentacles. The Eight of Pentacles ain't going nowhere. And now the Daughter of Cups with the Daughter of Wands. Okay. I don't know why I want to say that's like a nucleic energy for some reason. Nucleic water and fire, souls and essences. I just talked about that, didn't I? Okay. So I'm only going to reference these so I get the position right. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. That's what that is. <laughs> I'm like, uh. Oh, and the High Priestess is at the bottom of this deck. Oh, High Priestess at the bottom. Cut into the Magician. Okay. The High Priestess and the Magician. So I've started, um, I've talked about it a little bit. So I was building spreads and with the Tower and the High Priestess. That's one of my birth cards, and that's one of my friends' birth cards. Uh, with the Tower and the High Priestess. I don't know why I said that. But I've started that thing that I talked about. I've made spreads based off the energies of the majors. And when I was making them, I wanted an intention cross my mind to somehow use them to help people further along their growth of spiritual discovery and expansion. And I've been creating the, the graphics for the spreads, and I've started um, using them, and it's really intimidating. <laughs> it's a, extremely intimidating, and I'm trying to still fill out and discover my own role. I think the first three are the most, not ambiguous, but they kind of sort of define everything else. The Fool, the Magician, and the Empress. The Fool, the Magician, and the High Priestess. Sorry, not the Empress. Um, and I'm so proud of them. They look kind of cute, and I'll, I'll probably, I mean, I guess I can't, oh. I can, uh, what I'll do is I'll show y'all a little bit of the first one. And, um, if I can find it. Excuse me. One moment, because I'm like, I'm really proud of these, you know? And I want to share them, but I don't want to share them. Because 
you know, some folks take stuff and run with it. And this I do want to protect a little bit. Just a little bit. Although it's like if anything um, if someone comes upon something and takes it then maybe it's meant for them to take it potentially. Hold on. Oh no 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 that's the wrong one. Okay. Where's step zero? Oh here it is. Okay. Alright. So this is the first one. And it's just like really cute. Can you see it? Maybe not. There you go. That's the first one. And so as I'm doing this, I'm sort of like including the base spread as well as it used for the purpose of spiritual growth expansion and discovery. Spiritual self discovery, growth and expansion, stuff like that. Right. And I've written up to um, who? Number nine, the hermit. And I've only like created the graphic for uh, through the high priestess, but I'm gonna go through and finish those. Also, there's like excuse me, associated journal prompts for some of them. Like, the High Priestess, I didn't do any journal prompts for that one because that's one that I feel like would be more defined by the person. And that's one of the ones that can take any sort of path. Now, the Magician one was sort of like looking at where you're starting with the High Priestess being closer to the end. It's like, that is more so done in the moment. Um, but I've been enjoying it. Again, it's really intimidating. Oh my gosh, it's literally, is it literally right here? It's literally right here. <laughs> it's, and I could not find it. Hello, why? Why did you do that? So I'll blow it a little bit if you don't. Well, that was the first one. That was a preview of the first one. And then here's a preview of the second one. Now, the second one actually has the journal prompts, some of them down there. But it's been so, it's been really fun. And, like, I don't own the images, so. Well, I can copy right now, but. Anyway. Let's get into this. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's hilarious. Oh, gosh. this is how I'm doing it. This is how I envisioned it, but it's not how I necessarily thought about it. Mm. The Ace of Pentacles is interesting because that's the card that came out today. So the ones on top are the cards, the ones under it are the terrifiers. I don't really have enough space for this. Unfortunately. Oops.
Ooh, bottom of the deck is the Ace of Swords, Sacred Cinnabar. And in this deck, the, the crown is pretty close to the hill. So... That's, uh, that's pretty cool. I just saw the devil at the bottom of this deck before I started shuffling it. Okay. Ace of Wands wanted to make an appearance, but I'm not going to take it because that's not how this. Oh, well, I guess I'll take this one. That's no wet dog. The bottom of the deck over here is the Nine of Cups. So we have the Nine of Cups and the Ace of Swords. Now I wish I could lay these out so I could see all of them at once. That would be cute. I wonder if Tina was outside. But he shouldn't be wet. So, this is interesting. The reason why I laughed when the King of uh, Pentacles came out is because on this spread, this is all about, this is us like challenging the gods. This is the story of Ariadne and her weave off with Minerva Athena. That's her Greek name. Excuse me, it was Athena and Ariadne, I already forgot. And the first card that came out is the King of Pentacles. King of Pentacles is us, and this is the space of the challenge, so it's like us feeling like we're on top of the world, but on a deeper level, it feels like there is some kind of hurt, or some kind of pain, or some kind of betrayal, but that's more surface level. It's like it's masked by this and so the divine is asking us or through the space of our situations and circumstances it's getting us to sort of prove where our allegiances lie and it's a test of commitment and it's one that is intentionally difficult but not one designed to necessarily break you It's the space of something that you should be able to handle. Now, what's motivating this is this Seven of Cups, Knight of Cups energy. Seven of Cups, Son of Cups energy. And in the Wild Unknown, it talks about the kernel of darkness within the Son of Cups. That is this dark cup right here. And the Seven, the Corrupter, is about the Seven Deadly Sins. So here's a Pick Your Poison energy. Coming to the King of Wands and the Three of Swords, it feels like a little bit of a pride thing. It feels mostly like pride. Especially, I said King of Wands, I meant the King of Pentacles, but pride is the King of Wands energy through Leo. And the Lion is here to the Pride Cup, or would Leo be Wrath? I don't know. I don't remember. I think the Pig is about me, the Snake is Envy. Or maybe the snail was in the end. I don't remember. Pride feels like the one, but pick your dead this in. Pick your poison. And that's the energy here. I heard, like, pick your poison. And it's like the outcome of that is beautiful. Let me reread this one. Yeah. So, like, with the successful navigation of this, it really puts us in a position to be what we thought we were. Because we're sitting at the King of Pentacles challenging spirit, who's the Hierophant and hitting us back with the Nine of Wands, and they're giving us, or the result from this when properly sort of navigated, is the Ace of Pentacles, clarified by the Sun. So that's gorgeous energy, and very much so, I feel like, aligns with the card that I pulled earlier today. And over here... Whereas down here, or over here, it feels like we're kind of sort of like 
a little full of ourselves, but it does seem like there's a little bit of a soul energy of like a warrior, like we've done this before. And I think, I can't remember what I literally just said two seconds ago, but it was like, this is like, we are what we thought we were, but that's not what's necessarily depicted over here, especially coming from the Seven of Cups and the Knight of Cups. But over here, that's like very much so the story. It feels like there was this sort of self-alignment, self-attunement with the world part. It feels like on a soul level, or at least experientially, there is a lot of completion that's already done. Or that's been done. And it's almost like for a minute, maybe, your soul was allowed to rest because of the completion that you had, and now you're coming back as a sort of warrior energy. And so these challenges over here, like I said, like they're meant to be difficult, but they're not meant to take you out with the Hierophant. It's like they're meant to remind you of who you are and what you're capable of. But at the same time, it's a test of your dedication because if the painful experiences and the lack of fulfillment, it's like your response to that was to be proud or to go into pride, to go into the egoic and to establish yourself and to claim things that maybe you didn't necessarily prove. And the spirit's coming back at you like, you are worthy of all of these things, not for the reasons that you think, not because anything is owed to you, but because by nature of your soul and your previous journeys, You've already earned these things. Now show us that you want them. Because with the Six of Wands and the Two of Cups, the Two of Cups in this deck, to me, it's like a mirror energy. It's a, it's a card of um, reflectivity, I guess reciprocity. It's a card of equals. And so with the Six of Wands victory, I feel like it was like a internal and external. And you're coming out with the Four of Swords and the Hermit, which gave me that energy of, like, the sleeping warrior. Like, you got to take a break. Maybe you did experience major completions with the World Card in a lot of ways. And so it's like your soul was removed from the mortal coil. You had, sufficient, you had sufficiently learned enough to be able to navigate a lot of the more basic challenges, I guess I want to say. Not that they're basic, but the more Earth-based challenges. And with the death card in the Seven of Cups, which is also here, this is a death card is a Piscean. Piscean. Death card is a Scorpionic energy. Knight of Cups is a Piscean energy. Seven of Cups is also Scorpionic. And so again, I feel like for me, this lines up. It's like. At first, I laughed because it was like how foolish or silly of us to think that we are this king of pinnacles, king and masters of our own earth and demanding things from spirit. Like, that's funny. That's why I laughed. And then, like, the, the son of cups came out. I was like, oh, like, that's even funnier because you feel some type of way. And then the three of swords is like, okay, well, this kind of sort of, it's beginning to read like a trauma response. But there is some truth here. Now, part of the journey here is remembering, which is this Five of Cups and the Knight of, uh, Knight of Wands or Pinnacles. I don't know which knight I was about to say, but it's the Wheel of Fortune. The Five of Cups and the Wheel of Fortune, clarified by the Chariot and the Devil, are not clarified, but it's like, it is these very challenges that should remind us of who we are, or at least how we are or a truth of our truer nature, or a fraction, a piece of our truer nature. And the Five of Cups, the grotesque and to the Wheel of Fortune, is like the way that we choose to look at our experiences, which echoes an energy of this. It's like trial by fire, trial by combat, a test of dedication. And again, with the Nine of Wands culminating in that crescent moon, it carries a high priestess energy that it's like it's meant to remind us of who we are. It's not meant to tear us down or to destroy us. 
But if that's the perspective that we take, that's the direction that the wheel of fortune is going to turn in. And if the moon is at the top, no matter which way that wheel turns, it's going to go back towards the sun. And the sun is here with the Ace of Pentacles. The Ace of Pentacles, it's not that it gives us control, but we have a certain wisdom when it comes to that earthen element. And with the Ace of Swords and the Nine of Cups at the bottom of the decks over here, again, it, it feels more like remembering than learning. But learning and remembering feel the same when you've forgotten. If you've truly forgotten something, then it's like you, you're going to feel like you're learning it for the first time. But it feels like the closer you get to an understanding, the more it begins to feel like a remembrance. Like, oh, wait, like, I do know this. Like, I've learned this somewhere before. And I don't think it's supposed to be necessarily easy. Which is why we're coming back in this, like, Four of Swords, Death. Five of Cups energy. And the grotesque is all about the things within us that make us special that don't necessarily fit into the image that society would like us to fit into, so we cast those things aside. But it's those very things that I feel like we gained through a process of incarnation after incarnation, learning, or just within this life. You could have learned and grown exponentially since when you began. It's like, it's already done. It's already within you. You already hold the key. You've already claimed victory on many different sort of aspects and levels. Because it's a victory multiplying victories with this Two of Cups. And here's the King of Wands. Here's the Chariot. Last time it was the Prince of Wands, the King of Pentacles, and the Chariot. And I was like, this Prince of Wands is going to have to become a king. Here's the King of Wands that we once were with this Three of Cups. It's like it's an energy that we used to have integrated within us. It used to be a key piece of this whole. And there are three little stars in the sun right here. The King of Wands was one of them. And then the King of Pentacles is over here. So we have both of the kings in the same deck. The chariot came out in this one, blocked by the devil. Which is what this puts us in an energy to overcome. There's also an energy of... Uh, it's like a sacred obstacle or a divine blockage that the devil energy plays. But it's, again, it's not to defeat us, it's for us to overcome it, for us to do what's already within us to do. And it's also designed to awaken this sleeping warrior here, because the time has come for you to wield your sword, because the horses and the apocalypse are upon us. Not to be whatever, but I feel like both of these are death. This is death awakened. This is death asleep. I forgot about that. I just remembered. In this card, his scythe turns into a sword. As he's resting. And then the angel, the healer, temperance. Well, the healer is the star. But the angel, temperance, is in the window. And it's like the light from the window that's supposed to wake this one up. But with his mask, or with the, his face shield down on his helmet, not all of the light hits his eyes. And so it's almost like we're waiting for the sun to move in a certain way, or we're waiting for him to shift in a certain direction that will get the light to pass through the grill 
that's like that covers his face and to hit his eyeballs and to wake him up and to remind him of who he is. And the Knight of Cups is right here in the SKT. The Knight of Cups is the twin horse to the horse of death. And so, but I got a feeling that like this horse, because the Knight of Cups is the only unicorn in this deck, this horse sacrificed his horn to become the blade on the reaper's scythe. And it's that blade that can sort of like cleave into other dimensions. And that's why it's the Knight of Cups who sort of gallops from the realm of possibilities, from the realm of possibilities that we desire that brings it into our reality. That gets it to flow in. But this is more so about transforming the world around us. When this Seven of Cups, it is a lot about the world around us, but what's most important is that we're aligned with our own sun. Because only one cup faces the sun, the other cups face the moon. And I feel like they're of equal importance. So that's why it's so important for us to be connected with the peace and fragment of source that lives within us and not so focused on the world around us that we lose sight of that sun within us. Sun is at the bottom of both of these decks upright. And it reminds me of the eagle in the animal, modern on animal spirits, because the sun is at the bottom of that card with the eagle sort of holding it in its talons. And as I say that, a crow flies by. Mm -hmm. The crow is the hierophant in this deck, and it holds a key that isn't like this key. Can you see it? It's not like this key, but I'll find it. I'll just show y'all. What's wrong with Hold up, oh, the Ace of Wands is at the top of the deck now. I'll put it down here, because there you go. Since the World Card came out. Oh, oh no, that's the Father of Cups. Let's find the Hierophant real quick so I can show y'all. This is cute. I like this. Mm -hmm. Here it is. The higher font, it's between the three of wands and the two of swords. Once we make that decision and step through that portal that only we can step through and claim that within our own lives, then we get it. And if we look at the lightning bolt here, we see some of the colors that are featured here on that three of wands. But it's where the, the soul and the self meet with this eclipse. The sun being the soul, S-O-L, soul. The moon being the self through the space of the emotional body, also represented with the suit of air. We have the emotions represented by the air, uh, by the moon, the logical mind, or the thinking mind, represented by the swords in this card. Both of those are the self, and it's like it's opening this portal of light where that is sort of tempered and balanced. And this is also this energy of the sun and the Ace of Pentacles. If the moon was the Ace of Pentacles eclipsing the sun. And even as I have them laid here, we see the entirety of the Ace of Pentacles and some of the rays coming off of the sun part right there. Right? It wasn't the sun on top of the Ace of Pentacles. So it's time to wake up and to do what it is that it's not even doing what it is that you came here to do. It's more so being who it is that you already are. And while you are being that, you will by nature do what it is that you need to do. Because whatever it is that you need to do, I feel like it's just it's just tied to who you are. I like the truth of who you are. The truth that these difficulties in your environment are going to help you face. But again, it's a test of your commitment. And sometimes we are committed to the pain and the hurt and the betrayal and the lies. 
And when you are committed to growing into yourself and knowing yourself with this hierophant, hierophant with this hermit energy, or a hermited hierophant energy, then it's like that's what you become. You accept those things which life had get, gotten you to cast aside as you that are the keys to you being behind this wheel instead of being at the mercy of the womb of the wheel. And it's not that we necessarily control anything because control is, I don't want to say it's the weapon of the enemy, but trying to control gets us to introduce tension into the bind between these two sphinxes. And I talked yesterday about, because the, um, the chariot at the bottom of the deck in the Mystical Mondays, Mystic Mondays, it's a single sphinx. And I was like, I have two decks where the chariot depicts sphinxes on them. This is one of them. Here are the two. And if we try to introduce control, it puts tension in this dynamic, and it, it reduces the harmony between them. And I think that's where some of this pride comes from. But it's like a lack of control that we had in the past that got us to come into this from a three of swords space, we come into this King of Pentacles energy. And it's kind of a King of Pentacles in reverse. And the divine through life is going to help you get it upright. And when it's upright, that's the return of the birthright. But it's when that I feel like you've already earned. So that's what I got. Um, let's put all these back, I guess, and get some final messages. See, this was a lot. Oh, oh, I love this. Actually, yeah, I am. I was like, I'm not going to get final messages because I want this video to stay as short as it is. <laughs> so I don't think I am going to get final messages. Um, I'm just going to shuffle these, and then I'm going to put the... Top, I will build the top card, which is a, it's, it's going to be a final message, but it ain't going to be one of those final messages where it turns into like 15 more cards, and then a final message after that, final message part two. It ain't going to be one of those, but I will get a final message. That was cute. Okay, I'm glad I put those together. And look, cut into that three of wands right there. Again, it's all about getting you to remember and getting you to see, but wands is also a suit of action. So you have to do something with that. It's more than just holding the vision. And again, claiming that victory, getting that world span with that six of wands into the world of fortune. I love it. I love this. And then there's the sun card with that six of wands. Okay. All right. I get it. I get it. I'm going to give this three. One more. And then a cut. So we're ending with the ten of pentacles at the top and the nine of wands at the bottom. Again, I don't think it's meant to take us out. It is intended to be difficult because that's the only way for us to remember the strength and the power of the warrior that rests within us. But it's just to wake it up. The Ten of Pentacles, this is that Ace of Pentacles backed by the sun. That's why it's all yellow and orange and red inside and outside. It's the colors of the Nine of Cups, the blues and the purples. Nine of Cups outside, Sun inside, the Ten is the one which is the Ace, but it comes at the end of the completion of this Nine. So the Nine of Wands would be the first Nine, the Nine of Pentacles would be the last, but it feels like after we hit that one, it's like a, it feels like a pretty quick transition from the Nine of Pentacles into the Nine, uh, into the Ten of Pentacles. But it's not a transition in terms of wealth. It's a transition in terms of a separation from the events in life. As far as like not needing life to be perfect or everything to be good for you to be in a space. What the? <laughs> King of Pentacles. <laughs> okay, fine. I was like, hold up, wait, something don't feel right. King of Pentacles then snuck his little butt all the way over here. King of Pentacles, Ten of Pentacles. And look, 
We see the colors reflected in his horns in which the pinnacle is held. And so it is like this inside, outside, there's the sun and then there's the nine of cups, but it's all within us. It's all an extension of us, but it's still like separate. It's just inside, outside thing. They work together. They're kind of the same, but different enough. It's like one's the micro scale, the other one's the macro scale. And so on the micro scale, it's easier to zoom in on certain things. On the macro scale, it's easier to see the how they, it all plays together. And there are certain things that if you're too close to them, if you're too small, they look too big to give you a proper scale, right? Like we think that the sun is huge, but the sun compared to other suns, it's not tiny, but it's not the biggest that there is, right? Or like the earth is so big that we can't, like it looks flat to us because that's how small we are as compared to the total surface volume of the earth. But if you zoom out, you can see it in its entirety. You can see how small it actually is when you're not standing on top of it. And, you know, infinitely smaller than it is. Not infinitely smaller, but you know, several sizes of that, several orders of magnitude smaller. One more cut. And the tower with the Nine of Cups at the bottom of the deck. The Nine of Cups in this deck is the wishing well. What you wish for is needing for some corruption to be removed. This is the acts of Shiva, the acts of Shiva that removes corruption. The seven of pinnacle the seven of cups that was what motivated us to make this challenge in the first place was the corruptor. But it was like, it was that ego, or that whatever it was, that drove us to this, to make this challenge. And it's the successful navigation of those challenges that ultimately served to remind us of what we already were in the first place. But after we remember, the tower comes to remove that corruption. So we keep the reward, and we lose that poison, that darkness, that toxicity, and that's again what turns that king of pentacles upright, because right now it's like a king of pentacles in reverse energy, and the king of pentacles is like, it's like, it feels like an accurate energy, but for not the right reason, that's why it's in reverse, that's why it's unaligned, the tower will come in and align it, or, you know, not, depending on what perspective we hold. So that's what I got. I hope you have a good whatever, whenever you see this. And I hope you're acting in alignment to make that which you wish to experience your reality. Bye.